Welcome to Photo Work. I'm Mylon. We have Shannon here. And in today's interview, fashion photographer out of LA, Robbie Mueller. He shares with us his lighting style, his marketing tips, and he has career advice for newbies. So sit back and enjoy. Welcome to the show, Robbie. Thank you guys. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm to meet you too. Your, I'm, I'm glad to get out of downtown and enjoy this Silver Lake uh, vibes because, you know, I woke up to pee and poop on the ground this morning and it's oh, the trees yeah. and beautiful air in Silver Lake. So it feels, it actually rained last night. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Did you guys hear when you were sleeping or mm -hmm. was it like? Yeah, it was pretty loud. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Out here, I anyway. I totally missed it. I missed <laughs> that too. Maybe I think I need a house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Downtown is like totally different. It is. It's good to walk. Mm -hmm. You know, I have Whole Foods like pretty close, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But in terms of everything else, mm -hmm. it's not the best place to live. But you know, it is what it is. I have a studio, so can I yeah. complain? No. You know? Yeah. Do you, so you are able to shoot out of your like live workspace kind of? Yeah, it's cool. Um, I, we kind of sectioned off a very like specific area mm -hmm. that we made into a studio. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I've had better places that I was shooting in, but I'm just still happy to have this. You know, it's better than not, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, so yeah, it, feel, it feels good to have your own place like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not having to rent all the time. Yeah. I, I have a buddy that continuously is like, Dude, I just spent X amount of dollars on the studio this month. I should just get my own. I'm like, I know. Yeah. But it, it is easier said than done, you know? So we wanted to start off with how did you get started? Ugh, I knew it. Mm -hmm. Who would have guessed this question? Who would have guessed? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I guess uh, I, I just kind of really became interested when my grandpa was showing me cameras when I was seriously really young. Um, I always thought it was really interesting that he shot so much filming. He had slide film, so he'd show me like the slides and go over like on a projector. Yep. It, was so, it was so cool, and it was even antiquated at the time. Um, and so I started doing video. I would like shoot, you know, my friends skateboarding and BMXing in our backyards and stuff. And I was really into that, and like that was like my thing. And then I put my video camera on top of my friend's mom's car and she backed up and drove away and I just like never saw the camera again. And I was like 12 at the time. And oh. who, who has money for another video camera at that age? Especially so, then. It yeah. was so expensive. Yeah, it was not cool. Mm -hmm. And so my aunt get, uh, got me a video or a, a digital camera like shortly after that. I was probably like 13. Mm -hmm. So I started shooting digital stuff um, then and then... Uh, into high school, I started doing like actual film class and mm -hmm. that was fun. I'm sure you guys have taken a dark room class or mm -hmm. something and it was really cool to learn and mm -hmm. I enjoyed it and I, I did it every single year of high school and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to college now. My parents were very like, you need to go to college. And so I went to school for photo um, and was doing film there too and that was fun. Which yeah. school? I went to University of Akron for two years and I was like, what the heck? Like, I'm not learning anything, you know? <laughs> it was not set up for success there if you were an artist, you know? Which is fine. Yeah. It's a university. It was my mistake for, I guess, wasting time going there. And then I did three years at Columbia in Chicago. It's like a private art school, and I owe them a lot of money now. So um, if you guys want to ask some questions about that later, I can go into it. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd say my grandpa got me interested when really young. Sorry, I just went through a whole history there. So that was like your younger years. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about now? How did you get started professionally? Um, well, I was in school mm -hmm. and I, I, I am so bad at math and I am so bad at just school. And so I, I had to take another semester of classes and I was in Chicago and I was like, well, my roommate's leaving. If he leaves, then I have to pay the whole rent mm -hmm. and I'm not about to try and find like another roommate. So I was like, well, these people want me to go to LA. I had like a couple friends that were like, dude, now's the time, you know? And Instagram was like kind of just popping off and like doing its thing. And I was like, oh, I guess, okay, now is the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, screw school. I don't want to take out any more loans for this. I'll just go to LA now. And um, I came out here. I luckily had like a really good backbone of a friend that showed me a lot of things, introduced me to a lot of people. And uh, she actually got me a freelance job shooting for Revolve. It was like not 
Revolve. It was an, I don't even, I honestly can't even remember. I'll probably remember by the end of the podcast the name, but they own a couple of the brands mm-hmm. that are at Revolve. So I started shooting e for them um, freelance, which was a, like a big step up right away. I was working at Starbucks when I first moved out here and mm-hmm. it's like drive, dude, I, I lived in Silver Lake and then drove every day to West Hollywood. And oh. it was the dumbest thing ever. I just moved here. So my car bottomed out after the first month I was here. Um, so then, yeah, Revolve happened and I was like working a lot. It was a lot of fun. Met a lot of people and kind of learned how to manage a job, you know, quickly. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was super helpful because uh, without that, I don't know, you know, if I would have had the right experience to do other jobs at the time. So Mm -hmm. that was probably what started me professionally. And obviously you meet cool models, you meet cool people that are in the industry through that and kind of the rest of it just snowballed from there. But I'd say that was definitely the first start. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty awesome start. It was for sure. Yeah. I I was like, I wasn't used to making money because obviously Starbucks, (laughs) I was making like, you know, $8 or more at the time or something. And so the first thing I did, I was like, I haven't had video games in a while. And so I bought an Xbox One and I would play like super (laughs) late at night. And my roommate hated me. I had like a random Craigslist roommate and you would hear like, like, you know, 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And I was like, just a minute. Super in Halo. And (laughs) I worked hard for this. And so uh, then I moved out. I was like, screw these people. No, I'm Mm -hmm. just kidding. But I did move out shortly after just Mm -hmm. to play video games. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> i mean nothing wrong with that yeah no definitely not what made you decide to go west coast instead of east coast um well it was negative 50 degrees with wind chill oh. uh one day i rode my bike to work in, in chicago i rode all the way there wait, first of all which is stupid enough in itself like to ride your bike in negative 50 degree weather was ridiculous my whole face was like frozen. My nose was like running and it was, it was actually icicles down my lips. And I was like, what, what am I doing here specifically? Like, am I dumb? And I was like, well, I have to either move to LA or New York. And obviously I was sick of that weather. So LA just made sense for me. You know, I was over it so much so that it was like, get me anywhere. And I also visited shortly before I moved here too. And I was like super impressed with what I was seeing and, Like, then I was very interested in going to the beach. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like every day that I was out here, I was, like, at the beach. When now, I feel like I go to the beach, like, I don't know, once every three or four months, unless I'm shooting there. And which is very disappointing. You know, my old self is pretty (laughs) pissed at myself. It's like, dude, that's what you moved here for. I mean, I don't surf or anything, but just being by the ocean is, like, the craziest thing in the world, especially if you're from some landlocked i mean we have the lake in cleveland but it's it's not the ocean yeah you know i wanted to segue into your lighting style first of all your lighting style is amazing thank you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so we wanted to know like can you talk about how you achieve certain looks in your images and we can like pop up things off your instagram if you need to i'm not gonna do that yeah no worries it doesn't need to be like perfect but just in general like how did you arrive at your lighting style um i think Ooh. I mean, I always like studio mm-hmm. probably more than uh, outside just because you can control things. And I swear to God, every shoot I do is like, let's put this light here today mm-hmm. and see where we go, you know? Yeah. But um, I kind of really fell in love with like a harder light style as of lately. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, – I, I just enjoy the contrast that you can get out of it. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's almost hard to look bad if you're like blasted by light. True. And so you're blasted by light by a certain angle. So that one side of your face, man, wow, it is <laughs> really pretty, you know? So I, uh, I try and look for that when I'm lighting and, um, honestly experimenting. Mm-hmm. Like I've recently just started getting like random mirrors Mm-hmm. and I'll like put one here and then like one here and then one here and, and then bounce it like three different ways and um, kind of like play with that mm-hmm. until it looks good. And, you know, most times people kind of are, are I'm like, hey, make sure you're, you're in the light, you know, and, and then these, you know, models be like, I'm, I'm in it, you know, it's like, am I there? <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's the light. And, you know, and so 
it's fun to like collaborate with them on getting them into the light and mm -hmm. it's a process. So that's kind of been where I've been with that the last like year or so. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, uh, just experimenting, I think is the funnest thing with studio for sure. Mm -hmm. So if I had to describe my lighting style, it would be experiment people because uh, <laughs> that's the best way to arrive somewhere, you know. Did, did you get a foundation for lighting at Columbia? I did, yeah, for sure. Um, I think that was the thing I paid attention to the most because in high school, nobody taught that. So yeah. when you're in college, I was like trying to take the most important things out of what I was learning because a lot of it was like kind of repeated <laughs> stuff that I've heard somehow or another. And also when I was in college, the internet was already a thing. So I was already learning off the internet and you can't learn lighting that well off the internet. I feel like it's really has to come down to experiencing it with the teacher who knows what the heck they're doing and luckily I had some like really awesome teachers that were like killer at it mm -hmm. um so just paying attention to that was a good like you know foundation yeah. for lighting for sure do you get to experiment on client jobs do you break out the mirrors <laughs> um no but I have done like a pretty specific lighting style for them a couple times and I swear to God, it, I'll like do like a little bit of a shutter drag mm -hmm. and people are like, whoa, you know, and if you do that <laughs> and your client says, cool, like this is great, then, you know, that's pretty interesting because you never know what you're going to get if you're going to drag the shutter a little bit. And uh, it's cool to see a positive response from somebody who's paying you money to <laughs> yeah. kind of hope that something looks cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then other times I look, you know, I'm looking over at Capture One while I'm doing it. And I'm like. This looks like shit. I gotta stop right now. I'm wasting my time and their time. And let's all right back to one sixtieth of a second. Let's go. Speaking of capture one, mm -hmm. what do you feel? Um, how do I not throw shade at clients? Do you find that it can be a detriment to have your clients watching the stream of images coming in, or is is it just all benefit? Um, I'd say it's all benefit. I purposely bring like an iPad too, so I have another screen. Yeah. Um, if you do that, people put a, a really protective case on your iPad. <laughs> people drop that stuff. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's my, that's my iPad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I think it is beneficial to always have the screen on for people. Mm -hmm. it, the models too enjoy it usually, unless mm -hmm. sometimes you have to turn it away if they're looking yeah. too much at mm -hmm. it, which I, I would too. It's like a mirror, you know? Um, but the client... I like to get their feedback to make sure that things are going the right way. And if it's not, then you know, what can we do to change it? Um, and I think they definitely appreciate it too. Mm -hmm. Like having the option, Capture One has a terrible iOS program where they can um, favorite their photos there, which is kind of nice. It gives me an idea when I'm going through the selection process mm -hmm. or the proofing process to be able to kind of narrow it down based on what they liked already. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think showing people while you're working is definitely important as long as you feel confident with what you're shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was like something I didn't know what I was doing, maybe I'd be mm -hmm. like, all right, you could show them the, the computer now. Go ahead. Just really quick, like five minutes, just show them the computer, okay? <laughs> and, then, and then that's it. No more, you know? Yeah. But it's not usually like that, so. Yeah, I've heard of uh, photographers that don't like the feedback they, they want to be in the control yeah so that, and that's what i've heard a lot of people switch to film specifically oh my god so you they don't it's have, like hiding it yeah you have to trust me i'm uh, the professional uh -huh. i get it no i do i think that's like a really interesting way to go about it and you're a badass if you do that <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i like my relationships too much with my client though yeah well, especially now like if i'm working for with somebody for so long and for me to just switch it up they'd be like yo Where's that at? Mm -hmm. And actually a lot of people request it or it's, it's almost like a selling point, you know, mm -hmm. like in every single one of my emails and I'm like, you know, budgeting it out. I'm like, eh, and check this out. There's going to be a guy there with a computer the whole time, you know, and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's like future, man. <laughs> like, like, and also when I was at Columbia too, every mm -hmm. single thing we did was a demo or whatever. And we always were using capture one. So I think that is, um, and that's probably where I really like began to like using it. Also, shout out to Capture One in general because I used to be like a major fan of tethering to Lightroom mm -hmm. in college. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's just faster. It's just faster. And then like one day I like actually sat down in Capture One and I was like, 
what am I doing? Am I the dumbest person ever? <laughs> and all the other kids in my class were doing Capture One. And I was like, you guys don't even know, man. It's just, just like part of my workflow. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not well, so like, unstable. Like, yeah. Room, yeah. You were being a rebel. You were standing out from the crowd. Yeah, I was. I, yeah. Funny enough, because even though Adobe is definitely a very popular brand, for some reason, Capture One just takes the cake in that category. Yeah. I do use Lightroom, though, to like, that's like my final place for images. Like I'll have them sitting there after I'm done editing and Photoshop and everything and export that way just because mm -hmm. I feel like it's easier to do that. But everything else in between is Capture One and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's it. Um, that's interesting that you, um, so we're Capture One and Photoshop and then like, after everything's finalized, then you go like have like catalogs in Lightroom. Is that how you like, yeah. is like an organizational tip you have? I, th I think it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you want to avoid it at all costs, that's fine too. I think especially Lightroom is interesting now because they have like the two. I don't know if you guys, it seems like you don't really like it. So if, no. yeah. <laughs> so if we're talking about it and it's making you uncomfortable, let me know. No, <laughs> no hate. No, um, hate. no hate. But they have the two Lightroom programs now, the one that's like synced to the cloud mm -hmm. and then the other mm -hmm. one. Um, and the one that's synced to the cloud, I put all my film photos in, mm -hmm. which is cool because it's like kind of a space for them to be. And also I can just edit mm -hmm. on my phone or on my iPad, you know, randomly. And um, I think that's like a really cool thing about Lightroom that other programs don't have. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really the only, the only benefits to it, I feel like. Well, we just noticed that a lot of your images have a very subtly motion in the models. How do you achieve that with them? Ooh, geez, I don't know. <laughs> I tell them really sad stories. No, I think, I think it has to do with, okay, let me just get this out there. I don't watch movies ever. I just never watch movies, but I really like filmmaking, which sounds stupid. That sounds ridiculous. But anyways, I, I think it has to do with like wanting to f frame things or like convey like kind of like movie style or like, you know, just mm -hmm. acting, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and if, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I don't ever really push it too mm -hmm. much. I think I just wait for a natural thing to happen like that. Or when I'm going through selects, I just pick the one that looks the most like it has emotion or something. But yeah, I think, I think enjoying that aspect to uh, photography mm -hmm. and video is, is something that I try and get the emotion out of people. Mm -hmm. But I think too, it really depends on the person. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's hard sometimes people don't get that and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And you just got to work with what you have. Mm -hmm. And if you do get that, then you're like, that was badass, you know? Oh, yeah. it, it felt good shooting that person. Yeah. And I think in the level of comfortability, I think having a dog now at my house makes people so much more comfortable so you can get more things out of people, yep. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dog in the studio. Dog in the key. studio. That's twice we've heard yeah. that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Storm Santos, same thing. Oh my God, yeah. See, yes. it's very important. Like, mm -hmm. you definitely need a dog. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, you don't watch movies or you don't watch new movies. No, I don't watch movies. Any Ever. Movie? So with no. filmmaking background. I mean, it's not really a filmmaking background. It's just that I was really interested. I still am. Mm -hmm. I just don't watch movies. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I can't sit through them. I do watch them in theaters. That's mm -hmm. the only time I really watch movies. My girlfriend watches probably 10 movies a week and I hear them, mm -hmm. but I don't watch them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. My family didn't watch movies growing up. Mm -hmm. I was just always outside. Mm -hmm. I was playing on my computer, playing video games, just everything but movies. And now I don't value them. And I think it definitely messed me up when I was little doing nothing but, you know. So, I don't know. I probably should watch more movies. Maybe. I don't know. It's up to Who you. Who knows? Like, <laughs> I know. It's just really interesting. It's interesting. Because yeah. a, a lot of, uh, at least I think, a lot of people draw from that inspiration of those, those yeah. cinematographers yeah. or even photo-wise. Right. No, I... I and that's the funny thing, too, is, like, I will see stuff. I'm like, whoa, you mm -hmm. know, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate it. I just, I don't know. I think it makes me anxious watching movies, which is really weird. I'd rather watch a show every day yeah. than one movie. Like, I'll put on The Office, even though I've seen it a thousand, a thousand times, times before I'll put on a movie, which is so weird, but. Yeah. There's got to be some purity to that. Maybe you're not tainted by seeing other people. No, that's images. what's interesting to me. Yeah. Right? You know? It's, it's all it your is. imagination. Because your images have a cinematographic feel to me. Yeah. I don't know. With, without, the, you know, without consuming it, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've, you've seen parts, so. 
Yeah. I've seen a movie before. <laughs> <laughs> so if a photographer's newer in their career, like mm -hmm. what do you see them making like mistakes? What are the mistakes that they usually make? Shooting girls naked <laughs> or shooting s stuff that's, I mean, I, I want to talk, I don't shoot girls naked or anything, but I don't always shoot the most marketable thing. Uh, you know, portraits aren't that marketable all the time. I think a lot of people like see cool, cool, cool mm -hmm. photos of like girls with like little to no clothes on. And it's like, oh, that's, you know, I can do that. And I, if that's like how you learn photography, then that is. But I think if you want to actually make a career out of it, maybe don't stick with that specific, you know, type of photography forever, mm -hmm. because you're just going to get, you know, put into a corner and then kind of stuck there. And it's really hard to get out of. I've, you know, seen other photographers kind of get stuck with that and, mm -hmm. There's really no way to progress from that, I feel mm -hmm. like, unless you're shooting like Victoria's mm -hmm. Secret or something. Um, but I think that's the biggest, I mean, I don't want to critique anybody. I think, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's got to do their own thing, but I think you can definitely take from that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The idea is if you want to become a commercial photographer. Yeah. Yeah, shoot with you. Most likely not going to get marketable. Yeah. Yeah. Skills. I mean, you can make a cool ass book. You know, there's lots of cool books oh, that yeah. are just based strictly around that, but you got to put all the money into it and mm -hmm. probably not going to get much out of it. So, right. But a lot of people just do photography for the art of it. And I think that's cool. And I wish I could do that. But my student loans, please click here now for this one. <laughs> um, no, that's not the only reason why I do photography. I do it because I, I feel like, you know, like people are like, man, if I was an engineer, I'd still be doing photography, mm -hmm. you know? And that's actually true. I feel like I would, mm -hmm. I think. No, I definitely would, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's an interesting like, question right there. Like, do you see yourself doing anything else or are you just like photography has you for life? No, I'm so hooked. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I knew I was when I was in high school and I was like just so obsessed with it. Um, it just made sense for me. Nothing else interested me enough to like want to pursue that more than what I was doing. And so I just continued doing that, you know, <laughs> and I think you can tell if somebody's going to make it with photography based on their level of interest in it. You know, sometimes people just like do it because the money's good or, you know, whatever. And, and it's also bad sometimes too, <laughs> not to say that it's good only, but, um, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't think I could not do it. Right. I think about things like, what am I going to do when I want to retire? I just got to be better about saving money and then I might be able to retire someday. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be like 79. I'm like, looks good, you know? And like sitting, <laughs> right? like I'll be like sitting, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Shoe. Yep. oh, yeah. With like a back. I need a back thing. You know? Oh, so yeah. Just like a stool. The stool, yeah. Mm -hmm. No way my back will be able to handle it. Not like an 79. office chair. Like yeah. yeah. Only just yeah. roll around. Yeah. yeah. But there's like people like Peter Lindbergh. They're still going I know. strong. I mean, he doesn't, but he does it because he freaking loves, loves it. it. He has to because otherwise that guy's a millionaire. Oh, know? right. Yeah, does, exactly. Does he sit down? I don't know. Peter, if you're listening to Peter. this, please <laughs> let us know. Do you sit down? Yep. No, he doesn't. He's, you know, he's always, he's kind of like a badass hunchback pose. Yeah. Shoots mm -hmm. on the beach. Yeah. He's great. He's calloused into that position. He's yeah, that's what he it is. is. <laughs> His like spine has formed to yeah, that. To that. It's, just, it's just all day. I know. Do you, do you guys notice that your one eye that you put through that viewing hole is like little, you, like you always do this for like random things and you're like Yep. How do you market yourself? How do you get those clients? Mm. Well, I should take my own advice on this answer here more than I know the answer, okay? The answer is understand how Instagram works, understand posting, understand stories more so than anything, learn video and um, shoot good photos, honestly, and shoot good videos. It's definitely mostly about video or, uh, stories nowadays. Mm -hmm. You have to be posting stories all the time and not just boring stories. It has to be interesting stuff for people to give a crap like enough to keep on, you know, going to your page or watching your stories um, and then posting a lot just so you have like a constant flow of work. Um, so I think if you're not quite getting jobs yet, just shoot a bunch, mm -hmm. shoot some low effort stuff just to learn and shoot some high effort stuff just to get really good work and 
continuously do that until you're in a good place. And I think, um, you know, while posting often, it's going to help out and just get people to see your stuff. And like when I was first starting, Instagram was so different Mm -hmm. and it was like, like DM brands be like, Hey, I want to shoot for you. Yep. It like so simple and it worked. Mm -hmm. Now it's not that easy. There's like filtering systems and stuff like that through how they get their DMS and all that, you know? Um, so I think just having a presence online is important and it sucks because nobody actually wants to be sitting on their phone doing any of that work, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's unfortunate, but true. Mm -hmm. There's really interesting apps. Like I think it's called unfold to stories app. Mm -hmm. There's one called Mojo, I think. Okay. And it puts like a it, it motion into the stories and it looks legit, like really nice, good stuff. And I think that's the, the most gripping way to get people interested as opposed to just like posting photos to your story. Um, and also, like I said, video, learning video is important. Most people probably have a DSLR that can shoot video. So mm-hmm. the worst thing you can do is not switch your camera to the video mode every once in a while. I think you should just do it all the time to see. Even if those files just sit on your computer, it's maybe one day you'll grab them and like just screw around in iMovie. I think it's just important to do because um, more people expect you to do video almost on every single set. And I feel like every job I've like gotten hit up for this year said, oh, do you do video as well? And even if it's shooting the video in vertical, which mm-hmm. seems, you <laughs> seem like, you know, people are going to hate you for doing this, but you have to shoot video on vertical if you want it to be stories. Otherwise, you're going to have to zoom way the heck out, mm-hmm. crop that like weird, yep. you know, center frame or whatever. So shoot vertical video. It sounds crazy, but just do it and then put some cool stories together. Get people interested. I think that's so important. It's so messed up, too, because nobody knows how to do video. If you do, if you focus so much on photo, it's like a huge difference. Same with lighting. I mean... Mm-hmm. You got to hope that your light setup has like hot lights too. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think that's super important. But anyways, I need to take my advice more. So when I listen to this, pretend like you never knew this and then just start doing more of what I just said. Okay, so, all right. Thanks, bud. <laughs> thanks for tuning in to our interview with Robbie Mueller, fashion photographer. Stay tuned for part two, where he goes over even more career tips, why you shouldn't learn motion and the power of being nice. We'll see you next time.